and we back what's good family we back in this thing for another what would you do with the one and only y'all nicole briscoe what up what up nicole hey y'all i'm yeah. doing good how are you man i'm blessed man I'm, I'm excited about this one you already know you know what i mean we bringing a fam on we got some new faces we got some familiar faces you know what i'm saying but this one you know I, I, I forgive me for starting with cp time you know what i'm saying i know we about eight minutes late but you know we had to make y'all wait on this thing you know what i'm saying for the greatness for the greatness come on in i'm excited let's get this started let's man get i'm it. super excited so listen y'all y'all tuned into what would you do the mobile home game y'all where we go over different scenarios we got expert mobile home investors who have been doing amazing things and we pretty much get them crazy scenarios and we see how they can figure it out right so make sure you got your pen and pad ready and do me a favor if you already have not make sure you subscribe like and share our channel if you're on facebook if you're on youtube we truly appreciate y'all so without further ado i think we need to bring up some of our contestants for this episode of what would you do all right the mobile home game so who you who you want to have the honors who you want to go first hmm well my girl gave me some news today so i'm gonna start off with her y'all this queen is currently residing in the state of north carolina she was making money before mobile home investing but mobile home investing has put her on a path like no other so she made like a life-changing decision and she is doing mobile homes um what I love about Aquila is that um, life happened to her a few months ago, but she set a new goal and was like, I'm picking this thing back up. Um, what I want y'all to take from her is that sometimes, even though when you get off good um, after mentorship and training and she closed several deals, sometimes you do have to pause, deal with life, but come right back. It's never too late to come back. So without further ado, Aquila. Hey, let's bring up Aquila. How y'all doing? Hey, fam. How y'all doing? Hey. What up, Aquila? I love you so much. Love you, love you, you too, girl. <laughs> Man, we listen. We we always want to make sure, you know what I'm saying, that we give you the proper introduction. So, man, Aquila, we get, welcome to have you back. Excited. You know what I'm saying? I know, you, I know you're going to give us some great scenarios. I am happy to be here and I do have some fantastic news. I put in my letter of resignation to my job today. I oh, will be done. Okay. Okay. That's how we come in today. You okay. can. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so excited. I'm so nervous. My last day is April 20th. I'm ready to go. Let's do this. Hey, the story behind it is amazing. I can't wait for y'all to know it, but in due time, in due time. Hey, let's get it. Let's get hey, it. Let's Kimberly, get it. Kimberly, it's been a long time. Kimberly Braxton. I hope you're well. Check in with me, girl on Vox. Let's go. Let's go. All you right, remember so, Kim um, Byron? Of course I remember Kim. How could I forget? <laughs> <laughs> so listen, let me see. But next person, this one, I got this one is a special one to me, right? This one I, I it was amazing to see her and her new fiance's journey. This person was family and literally saw us from the beginning, tapped in with us and was just like, hey, listen, I love what y'all doing. Like, I, listen, was already a hustler, but like I, I need in. And, you know, shout out to all the family that we have. But I would say this was our first family member that took the game and ran with it. Right. In the Chicagoland area with me, um, and killing in Indiana and been doing some amazing things. Just like a certified hustler. So I got to bring up our cousin. Donika, what up, Donika? What's up, family? Hey, oh. <laughs> hey, girl, how you doing? Good, uh, good, good. So, man, welcome, welcome, Donika. It's always dope. Make sure the, the, the beautiful thing about it, everybody we got on the stage, they got an episode of, um, they got an episode on here of, you know, uh -huh. what I'm saying, on, 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 on our, um, it's not even a podcast. I guess you could say a show. I, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so who you got next, Nicole? Who you want to bring up? Um, y'all know I'm gonna bring my brother up. <laughs> <laughs> he stick, he stick with me through it all, thick and thin, no matter what. This mobile home journey, that's my dog, Aaron Haynes from out of California, West Coast, West Coast. 
Oh, he got his hair done today. What up, bro? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Shiny in the motherfucker. <laughs> you look good, brother. You look good. What up, Aaron? What's up, y'all? Thanks for having me. Yes, Nicole, sir. I'm going to get you. <laughs> <laughs> let's get it. Let's get it. Let me see. So let me see who I got next on here. So this next person. Uh, let me see. This next person. Let me see. Let me see. Hmm. This next person. I'm going to bring up another Chicago person. All right. This next person. Just yet. Now, first thing. Another. This person started early on. Was in the was in the Facebook group killing, offering so many people. Became a, an a, an amazing JV partner. Just got nominated for an award. Right again for women. And you got to correct me so I can get it right because I don't even want to butcher. But she just got nominated for an award for her service. Literally for killing, killing the mobile home investing. So such a positive. So always willing to help us out. Man, she's helped so many people known for the term tools and fuse. Y'all got to give it up for Miss Tavia. What up, Miss Tavia? Hey, Tavia. I love your shirt. Those deals. Hey, That's what we came to do. Thank you so much. Yes, I did receive the Women of Excellence Award for the Chicago Defender 2023 for my community service and helping uh, families and making a difference. So thank you so much for recognizing that um, my people will be bringing in my crown in a minute. They're just polishing it off, you know, so, you know, got to make sure it's right for the show. Thank you. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Co, who up next? None other than another North Carolina queen, Miss Tamore. Miss Tamore and her husband are amazing. They are seeing the mobile home deals through. What I love about Miss Tamore, they truly work as a team. She was able to retire her husband. She, you know, I, I just love that. I love the way they operate. She said, my husband been taking care of me for years. It's now time for me to take care of him. And he's also do, he does a lot of their handyman work. So, Miss Tamore, Miss Tamore, bring her to the stage. Hey, Miss hey. Tamore. <laughs> What's up, Miss Tamore? How you feeling? I'm feeling wonderful. How's everyone doing? Glad to see everyone. Yes, yes, man. I'm excited about this one. So last but not least, we got a newcomer, all right, hailing from Chicago. All right, this queen was one of our early fast track students. Again, continuing to do amazing things. One of Chicago's own doing deals. Again, making sure she's maximizing the Illinois area and Indiana. Let's bring up no further ado. Let's bring up Miss Jillian. What up, Jill? Hey, Jillian. Hold on, I don't think we can hear you, Miss Jillian. We can't hear you. Mm -mm. Nope. You may have to jump in, jump out, and then we'll get you back on here. All right, cool, cool. So, man, listen, I'm excited for this. Listen, if you're on here, do us a favor. Make sure you share this live with at least four to five friends because, again, we about to have some fun. All right, y'all, make sure we get this up, and if you're going to catch the replay, we get it. Make sure you definitely tap in. But y'all, this is another episode of what, what, what my thing at right here, real quick, real quick. What was it? It's another episode of what would you do? The mobile home game. All right. So Nicole, what you want to do? What you thinking? Who you want to do? Who you? How you want to kick this one off? Hmm. I would like to put them on teams. Oh. I, I would like to put them on teams to hear them strategize together, hear their thought process. Jillian. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear you? Got it good. Okay. I like that, Nicole. I, I like that putting them on teams because you know what we can do? I think with the teams, we can give them a time frame, maybe about what anywhere from two minutes, you know. What you thinking? Um a 90 seconds. 90 seconds. All right, I got yeah. the okay. So I don't I don't know how your screen looks, but I see Aquila, Danica, and Aaron. Yeah. Okay, so let's just do. Aquila, Danica, Aaron, and then Tavia, Tamora, Jillian. Ooh, okay. We didn't, you, hey, you didn't spice this boy up. Okay, hold on. 
<laughs> All right, cool, cool. I like this. We're gonna go ahead and switch it up. So let me put my, my time clock on a minute 30 seconds. All right. And so who you want me to read out the first scenario? Or you got it. I'm gonna let you read out the first scenario, but we meet we need as much uh crowd support as possible. So while they're debating and figuring out how they will handle the situation, I'm curious to see what the audience will say as well. So I want y'all to definitely um check in, like Byron said, so we can see who's in the comments with us where you guys are from, and also who you siding with. You siding with Team A or you um, siding with Team B? Ooh, this one fun. I know everybody like, see, we switched it up on y'all, Quee, Aaron, and Tavia. Y'all like, hold on. We thought we was going to have the same format. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool, cool. So, all right, so check this out, y'all. Okay, scenario number one, okay? You invested $10,000 with an investor for a land deal. Mm -hmm. You will promise a 15% ROI and the deal will be done in 90 days. Mm -hmm. You signed a JV contract and wired your portion over. You find out that the money you wired was sent directly to the mover. You are at the 120 day mark and then the deal falls apart. The investor is saying the mover didn't do their job and your $10,000 is gone. What would you do? 90 seconds starts now. We're going to start with Aquila, Danica, and Aaron. Oh, no, you know what? Y'all was all on mute. Tavia and Tamora were unmuted. They said we ready, so y'all go first. Oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. Let, let me get our 90 get... seconds. Ding dong, it starts now. I got my okay. timer on, too. Nicole cheating. <laughs> okay, so we got, we got within 120 days, Saying it was the movers' fault, invested ten thousand, supposed to get back a return of fifteen percent. Signed the contract. Um, just want to know in this scenario, did the contract indicate that if the deal did not go through in a certain amount of days, that we would get our money back? Nope. So no specifications in the contract about getting the money uh, back if the deal fell through. Okay. Okay. Here, here is my concern about the uh, the whole scenario, ladies. Is that the the deal did not specifically specify um, us getting our money back if the deal did not go through, and specify a time frame of when the deal should go through. But here's what I'm thinking. If we were supposed to get 15%, regardless of whether or not the mover did what they were supposed to do, if that part didn't line up, we should still be able to get our money back. Would y'all agree with that? I'm going to say yeah. Uh, 90 I'd seconds like on myself. To. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to I'd like to get the money back. Um the JV contract. Can we can we do we have a second or two to talk about that? The other party, uh what's the deal with them and the responsibility or or what's promised? No responses. Okay. Um Huh? Yeah, to no. to to the to the to the so, host of the game show. So the the con the contract just the contract just outlined what was supposed to be done. Okay. So one, and it, it fell, fell through. through. And it, it, fell, it through. fell through. Hundred and twenty days. Okay. It was fault. Did not happen. I say. Give, give, okay. Give me who's, my whose name is the contract under? You. The, well, the name is under the the investor, and you just you just did a joint venture uh, contract with them. Yeah, with the investor. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, we sell we selling. We taking all we get. We taking more than fifteen percent. We taking it all. We selling. What? Yeah. We we selling. The contract fell through. Yeah. They lost your money to the mover. Money. They lost, yeah, they, we, we lost money. The deal, the deal didn't <laughs> go through. 
So I, uh-huh. I'm saying run, run my coin. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying run yeah. my coin. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I say yeah. the same. All okay. right, cool. So we're gonna go to the next team. We're gonna hold that. We're gonna hold that. We all right, Yannika, all right. Aaron. Is this a trick question? Because you said ten thousand dollars was for land. So what is a mover for? No, 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 no. The tenth so you invest ten thousand dollars, it was a land deal. Oh, right. That's okay. what you were told it was. But then so, remember when you when you wired it over, you thought you were wiring it to the investor, but you end up wiring it directly to the mover. The mover did not do what they were supposed to do, and the and the deal fell through. So, so now, I, with that being sa- said, the, they're saying your ten thousand dollars is gone. What you're gonna do? Um, oh. I, yeah. So, guys, I would have it. I would have an issue with that because even if it was wired to the mover, they if they didn't, we didn't have communication in 120 days, and you have a JV partner. That's the bad thing. Why are you not talking to your JV partner in 120 days to where you're missing $10,000 and you don't know where it went? That's the first problem. The second problem is I would file a judgment against the mover because if the mover got the money, then they don't have any, like, they're not in compliance with their business ethics. If they're taking money and they're not completing their job, I would take them to small claims court. Even though they're not, they may not, even if they don't have the funds to pay it, you still have to do that legally to show that they did something criminal against you and they stole money against you. And then I would um, I would continue to move forward with different investments, but I would not do any more investments with that person. Because if you guys can go 120 days without talking to each other and you just lose $10,000 and you don't know where it went, then that's a problem. She hit it right on the head, Bob. Yeah. I'm definitely pulling up and I'm pulling up like way before then. And I'm going to be hitting yeah. technically just take 10 bucks from me like that. So yeah. nah, I'm pulling up. I'm a steady following up. And, and another thing that I've learned with mobile investing after making mistakes when they want to get into mobile home investing, make sure that your contracts and everything you do is detailed. It has yep. to be because once you if it's not detailed it's just like an open book and anybody is going to find loopholes in the contract and find a way to get around it so first of all before i'm signing a jv deal if this don't go through at the 120 days you have right. to refund me my my money you know and then like she said i, would follow, I definitely would be on the movers and filing a claim to get my money back because you were paid and it didn't fall through and you didn't do your part so either you'll get my money back or we go run run this another 30 days and we go finish it up in 30 days i agree with all that, but, but i'm definitely with Danico, whatever name how you pronounce your name but i'm for sure pulling up they ain't got my money right <laughs> fuck all i mean yeah i'm with <laughs> I'm with Aquila too. We do the court thing too, but yeah, nah, ten racks. I'm pulling out for sure. Your your first sentence was correct. You ain't have to change. <laughs> you about to say f all that? <laughs> hey, listen, listen. I love it, Nicole. I think on this one we should do since we on teams. We got like, well, let's let it's because they can't really powwow together. So let's let each one of them go. You know what I'm saying? And then we'll judge from there. You know what I'm saying? Like, we'll, we'll actually, we just let the audience judge. Yeah. Some scenario they like better. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, so, go ahead, Nicole. Mm-hmm. So, who do y'all agree with? Do y'all agree with Team A, which is Danica, Aaron, and uh, Aquila, who wants to result to violence first? <laughs> or <laughs> do y'all want to go with Team B? <laughs> team B. <laughs> And um, <laughs> possibly take them to court, mm-hmm. renegotiate a contract. Mm-hmm. Is it Team A or Team B? Yeah. We Tamika had a question. Didn't even, T, Tamika didn't even let me finish the statement. She's talking some Team A. <laughs> right. Everybody choosing violence. <laughs> right. Oh, Lord. Miss Patty, a JV is joint venture. Joint venture. This means a partnership. And I'm with I'm with Kimberly Bolton. She said Team A and B. Yeah, I'm gonna pull up, but I'm gonna file some paperwork too. Yeah, that's hey. We had both of those. Nicole. <laughs> she <just said> paperwork. <laughs> said she pulling up, but I'm with her. We pulling up, and yeah, 
you gonna wish you would uh you gonna black. wish you would have had that ten racks. You Let's said what, Nicole? She said Black Mafia. Yeah, BMF. That's the story of BMF. BMF. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's that's my show. Oh, you is gotta it, get on that, Nicole. What is it on? Stars. Stars. Yeah. Okay. Stars. We need a check. Cut the check, district. stars. We're giving y'all a promo. I think Team A give them more power type of vibes. <laughs> <laughs> We yeah. more uh, Malcolm X than Martin Luther. Counting this like Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I love it. I love it, man. Okay, I like this. I like this. So, uh, okay. So, so far that one, we give it to Team A. I, team, I know. So, what I, I reason why I like that scenario because y'all notice I left out. What I love about Team B, Team B had a lot of questions, right? They like, okay, can yeah. we get more details? And like, it got to be more to it. But the reason why I left is so broad because we gotta give y'all a challenge. You gotta be like, "Well, hold on, wait, what?" Right? We gotta we gotta give y'all a little mix up. So I get team, you know, team B got to go first. But Nicole, you want to go? You want to do scenario two or which one? How you want to do it? Well, I think we should wrap it up. The uh, what would you do with scenario one? How would you handle it? Mm. Or or should we just we can leave it to the audience and go to the other one because it is seven thirty and we got some more good scenarios. Yeah, yeah let's leave, let's we gonna leave that to the audience and then we we'll okay. go on the, the, the next one. So we let I let you go on your next one. All right, scenario two, a pack a park. What the fuck? Hmm? Dale sad shooting. Got, no, I got the stuttering. My oh. tongue, <laughs> my tongue was in the back of my throat. What the? Okay, let's start over. A park manager offers you five handyman specials. Wait, did you say somebody got a shooting pirate? <laughs> that, that face yeah. that you had, I was like, you know. It's, it's... <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. That's going to be us pulling up on Buddy. <laughs> no, 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 okay. A park manager offers you five handyman specials for $500 each. The homes have no titles. They have been vacant for three months. And the park manager only will provide a signed document that the homes are abandoned and park possession. You take possession and a month later, two individuals message you, message your listing saying they have the titles and want $500 to give you the title back. Or they will sue you because you they were wrong, wrongfully evicted from the park. The park says they have nothing to do with this since you took possession. What would you do? So the park manager gives you five handyman specials at $500 a piece. They have no titles. They've been vacant for three months. The park can only offer you a signed document that the homes are abandoned and park possession. You take possession and a month later, two people inbox you off of your listing on Facebook, I'm assuming. And they say, look, that's my house. I got the title and I want you to give me $500 to get the title back or I'm going to sue you because they were wrongfully evicted from the park. The park says they have nothing to do with this since you took possession. What would you do? We'll start with team A this time. Go first. Mm. Well, I, the got home, uh, I got a home from um, my last day. I got a home from the park. I got it for a dollar. They didn't have the title for the home. They give you a bill of sales. And then the home, a sheriff comes out and the home gets inspected. And then from there, you go and switch the taxes over to your name. And then you have to take those documents to court. And it's what with the bill of sale with the court record, it'll be, be able to show that you became the rightful owner of the homes. So with that bill of sales and following all those steps correctly, it's going to show that you're the rightful owner of the home. And then if they do take you to court, then we just in court with paperwork. And you'll be able to show that you gained the possession of the home the correct way, and you didn't like steal it from up under them. I agree with I agree with that as well. But um, another thing I would add is, honestly, it's twenty five hundred dollars. I I buy the home if they want five hundred dollars each for for those homes, and I know I can make a profit off of those homes. I buy them from them. I'll just say here, take this five hundred dollars for your troubles. Um, I'm sorry that this didn't work out for you um, in, the, in the exchange for the $500. Let me have these titles and I'll keep it moving and I'll sell the homes. About you, Aaron? Uh, I agree with Danica. If I'm saying, I hope I'm saying. 
Danica. 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 Sorry about that. Danica. Yeah, I, I agree with Danica. I'm not rebuying. I don't agree with Aquila. That's my sis, but I'm not. Yeah, I'm not re giving him another five. That's not happening. Even if we can make a prof uh, profit. If you got a buyer's list, you could just wholesale it and then check mm -hmm. it off the home without even touching it, fixing the door. Right. Right. See, we gotta limit y'all to one answer because y'all love to give a different <laughs> answer. It's one a piece. No, nah, you said one you a said piece. Ninety seconds, B. Ninety. You said ninety seconds. We had like sixty-seven seconds. I'm counting. Uh, so we finna go that route, or we could we could wholesale this home. Okay, you want five? I'm finna post it for the two. Right. Right. Well, we two against one. So y'all. So well, Danica's Danica. Let's go with Danica answer. <laughs> <laughs> Danica. Yes. Danica. I'm sorry. Danica. I'm sorry. Danica. Danica. <laughs> cool. Okay. So that's team. So we got team A. We got team A answers in. Okay. Team team B. Who want to kick it off? Um, I will. I totally I agree with Aquila. You know, I don't want no problems. And I know I can flip those houses. You know, I can wholesale them. Let's just keep it moving because going and doing paperwork and wasting some time, I like quick turnarounds. Let's do this $500 thing. As a matter of fact, I know somebody that'll get it from me for, you know, $2,000 or whatever it is. That two and few gonna kick in on me and then I can work on the other ones that's free and clear. Let's go. I, I'm, I'm for that. I, I don't want no problems. Is this your house? Okay, let, let's make it happen. How much you want? You know what? I'll throw you an extra $20 for gas. Let's go. Jillian, we can't hear you. You on mute? You on mute, Jillian? Nope, we can't hear you. What in the world? They trying to cut my girl out. We can't hear you, girl. You might have to jump right in, jump out. Come Jump again. out again and come back. She said, okay. What's up, Mr. Moore? Um, so he, what I'm hearing is that the park manager has a signed document saying that the mobile homes were abandoned, right? Mm -hmm. um, I went through a scenario like this where the I had to get... Um, an inspector to come out and make sure that there were no liens on the property first. Um, make sure that no one could come back and claim the property. Um, also would entail that they wanted to be sure that um, you had a, a bond um, on the property as well. But it just so happens that the park manager came up with the title. But in an instance like this, where the person is coming back saying that they have the title um, and the park manager saying that they have a signed document and that they were wrongfully evicted. I think for me personally, um, until it is situated, I wouldn't want to even touch any of these mobiles. And that's just for me personally. I wouldn't want to touch any of these. Um, I just believe in doing things upright, you know, in the beginning so that nothing comes back and bites you in the behind at the end of the day. Um, so until they can say to me or, or, or give to me some type of documentation indicating that, yes, these five mobiles belong to them and they have the right to then sell these mobiles off, then I would go with it. Um, other than that, if I have another party coming and saying, hey, I'm the rightful owner and I don't have no real titles from the park managers, I'm not gonna move forward with it. And that's just me personally. So I wanna add something to this. So Danica was given a whole scenario, like the park gives you a bill of sale, then you go and get the taxes in your name, then you could go to the court. <laughs> Y'all gotta understand, that sounds real good, but that does not apply here. So I was surprised when Aquila agreed with her Cause me and Aquila in North Carolina, and that don't work here. A bill of sale is just that—a bill of sale. Whether the park give it to you with Joe Smo, so you can't go to no courthouse or none of that, etc. Mm -hmm. So that that wouldn't apply here. I know that's she's in the state of Illinois, so it. Mm -hmm. you, yeah, I did that deal in Indiana, so that was in Indiana. 
So they sold me the house for a dollar. And um, the house had been abandoned. Um, I think like the person went to the nursing home or something. It had been sitting. They sold me the house for a dollar with the agreement that I would pay the $300 back taxes. I called a collection agency, paid the 300 back taxes, gave the park the reference number that it was paid. Um, took And then the sheriff comes out, runs the VIN number, make sure that everything is correct on the home. You take, I got scheduled a court date. I went in front of the judge. She said, what paperwork do you have to show me that this home is rightfully yours? I gave her the sheriff's paper, the application, and the bill of sales. And she stamped it, and I mailed it off and got my title. Wow. I wish. And I sold that home for $16,000. I wish. I wish it was that easy here in North Carolina. Big bad. So, so one thing that I'll, uh, that I'll add is I want y'all to realize, too, the park gave them a signed document that the homes was abandoned and park and had park possession. Mm -hmm. So that right there was, you know, again, like y'all kind of y'all get out of jail free card, right? In the case of, like you said, the people that's coming, they, they got evicted from the land. So they can have the titles, but here's the reality. They didn't have enough money to move it. It's, it could be, it could be their possession, but it's on the park's land. Right. So in that case, like you like having that having the title, I mean having the park stamp that, that's when like I would just be like, Well, you got evicted. So go here's the thing, go move it, right? Go go move it, or the money you think you about to sue me with, you could have been moved the home off, which I don't think you have. So mm -hmm. have have a good day. Uh <laughs> on to the next one. <laughs> what about you, Nicole? Well, for me, I'm, if I'm being honest. Again, we don't have that process here in, in North Carolina. And I currently have a property that does not have a title that I rent out. And I would love to have a title for it. So if somebody contacted me and say that, I'm going to play victim. I'm going to be like, oh, my gosh, are you serious? It was sold to me on a bill of sale. Um, I understand you want $500, but I've already paid for that. So I'll definitely give you something, but it can't be anywhere near $500 knowing goodness where I can get them $500. And if they say, oh, well, I need at least $400, da, 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 I'm going to say, okay, let's meet at, let's meet at the police station. I'll give you $400. I, I want that title. Me personally, I want that title. But I ain't doing what Tavi said. Well, God, here's $500 and extra for gas money. Because as soon as I agree and be like, yeah, I'll give you $500, they're going to be like, well, I meant to say 500 times four. What the? No. Mm -hmm. Take this little bit of money. Take this little money, money and go. So I'm I'm gonna negotiate everything. So I would negotiate and play victim to get them to lower the price, and I'll give them the money for the title. Hold on, Jill, say something. Let me make sure we can hear you. Can you hear me now? Perfect. We got That's you now. Right. Okay. What you awesome. doing, Jill? Huh? What you gonna do? About what? I didn't even hear the question. And this, we on the same question. Same one. Okay. Yep. Um, I would uh do the same thing that uh Tavia and Aquila was saying. I would just go ahead and pay the five hundred. Yeah, and uh, yeah, pay the five. Did the audience, y'all didn't? What's, what's the audience? What y'all doing? Y'all paying the five hundred? Y'all going to deal with the part and just be like, oh, where I got possession? Uh, what was it? Telling the buyers the kick. I mean, the people the kick rock. What y'all doing? What y'all doing? Put in the chat. What are y'all doing? Oh, y'all say team A, team B. What y'all doing? Mm -hmm. Let's see how they coming. Dale said he paying the five. He said he got it. <laughs> how he got team A? Kimberly said, "Team A, oh team, team A, I'm out here. Even even with the disagreeing, y'all still getting them votes." <laughs> Anybody else? Let's see how y'all coming in the chat. Anybody else? V. Pooler said, "Team A." All right, cool, cool. Hold on, it's coming in a little slow. I know it's a delay. Team A. Oh man, Team A, come on, come on! Somebody show Team B some love now. Hold on, y'all. I'll be right back. Comment, Team A. 
<laughs> All right, cool, cool. Okay. Well, that's how we that's how we doing it. Okay. So we got scenario number three. Y'all ready for scenario? Put yes in the chat if you ready for scenario number three. This one, I gotta give y'all a challenge. Y'all already know. I'm, I'm always my my scenario is gonna be always be off the wall. Off but, the uh, wall. Off the wall. <laughs> hey, hey, look, Dale said, I got two jobs and 15 vending machines. I ain't got time to go to court. Okay, brother, we hear you. <laughs> you go crazy. All right, cool, cool. I see the yes is all right, cool. So let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get to the next one, okay? So listen up, y'all. You have a mobile home that has been vacant for two months. You purchased a mobile home. You bought it for $6,000, okay? Now, lot rent is $450. So you didn't pay two months lot rent, and you have done $3,000 worth of work, right? So you're almost all in $10,000. Now, because of your busy schedule, you decided to go in a contract with a wholesaler for 30 days. So you're giving a wholesaler 30 days to market your home. You receive a call from the park manager two days later that the wholesaler is bringing an individual in the office and saying that they're an investor and that they have a lady who wants to buy the home. The investor is telling the park that he has full control of the home and he's threatening to move the home out of the park if he doesn't get his potential tenant approved. The wholesaler and the investor are raising hell in the office. Remember, you're in a 30 day con contract with the wholesaler and this is only day two. What would you do? Y'all need me to read it again? Ooh. Okay, I'm yes. going to read it one more time. We're going to start with Team B on this one. You got a mobile home that has been vacant for two months. You you acquired it for $6,000. Lot rent is $450 a month, and you have already done $3,000 worth of work. But because of your busy schedule, right, you didn't show the home, you haven't got anybody to buy it, you decide to go into contract with a wholesaler on a 30-day contract. You receive a call from the park manager two days later after going to a contract with the wholesaler that he brought an individual up to the office and an individual saying they're an investor and they have a lady who wants to buy the home. The investor is also telling the park that he has full control of the home and he's threatening to move the home out of, park, out of the park if he doesn't get his potential tenant approved. The wholesaler and the investor are raising hell in the office. Remember, you're in a 30-day contract with the wholesaler and this is only day two. What would you do? Start with team B. Hmm. Okay, this, this, this is a good one. <laughs> this is a good one. Huh. Okay. I'm just talking through this. So I got this mobile home. I'm in a contract with the wholesaler for 30 days. So the wholesaler has an investor that has someone that wants to purchase the home. That's too many hands. That's too many hands in the pot. First of all, huh? Okay, what would I do? It's Thirty days, and it's only been two. Okay, one. I'm gonna have a conversation with the wholesaler because if me and the wholesaler is in the contract together. And they're dealing with someone that's causing an uproar. And now the park manager is calling me because some, there's some issues. I think our, our biggest thing is always to make sure that we have our relationships established with, <laughs> with the park manager. So anyone that is causing an issue with Ooh. my relationship with the park manager, I wouldn't want to continue and have business to go forward with. So I would talk with the wholesale and be like, listen, we need to we need to scrap whomever this is that you have in a conversation with. You 
You talking on mute, Byron? No, I was saying who next, Tavia Jill. Um, you said the wholesaler is talking to the park manager, threatening threatening them, saying that they're about to move the home. Mm -mm. The no. investor that the wholesaler oh, has been this investor. Okay. Uh, who has somebody that wants to buy the home. The wholesaler then. Try to see if we could, I don't know. Um, something out. I gotta, uh, I don't know. Yeah, this, this, this one is good. Cause this, this is, this is my home. I'm in it with the wholesaler, but then the wholesaler is talking to sort of like this end buyer, which is the investor that has the one and they call it in the ruckus. <clears throat> okay, for me, um, the way that I'm understanding it is, first of all, our agreement would be established right off the top. So my contract would support um, the way that the agreement goes as far as um, me being the investor and um, there being the wholesaler and the terms. And I think the proof of that, uh, I will present that to my park manager and let them know that, you know, this is not how this goes, especially if I have that relationship with the park manager. These are the terms of the contract. And I would definitely have that conversation with the wholesaler um, to let them know, listen, this is not how this is supposed to go. This is not our agreement. Here's the paper. Here's the terms that we both agreed on uh, and go from there. So I wouldn't. Yeah, I think the main issue is the the uh, respect of the contract between the investor and the wholesaler. So I think, you know, if you've got your contract and your paperwork done correctly, then, you know, you should be able to prove that the way that they're trying to do it is not how it goes. Nice. Okay. Team B. Jill, any, any last for your team? Or are you, are you, are you in agreement with the squad? I'm a friend. I don't know. This one stumped me. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool. Let's let's go over the team. Hey, who who first? Which one? Uh, who want to go first? Well, with me, go. go ahead. <laughs> um, with me, I feel like um, your most important relationship is gonna be with that park manager because that park manager you get in there right go keep you fed and go keep feeding you deals. So what I would do is I would just end the contract with the wholesaler and just uh, re-strategize and remarket the home, put it on different platforms, get the uh, people that inquired about it attention just by dropping it by $200. Because, you know, every time you drop the price of your home on Marketplace and stuff like that, it's saying everybody that inquired, you know, a notification. So that's what I would do. Nice. I agree. I agree as well. I would also check the hell out of the damn home. Oh, yeah. But let that, <laughs> no let, that guy, let whoever come up in there causing a ruckus. Like, I check him. <laughs> uh, okay. So, the team, so, team A, this is this, this our final. We, we pretty much breaching, y'all gonna say, we breach, we, we breaching the contract. And, okay. And then it sounds like. He fired team, on a job. <laughs> team B is more like we're gonna pretty much we're gonna have a conversation, and is it almost like we're gonna we're gonna kind of let you know this is not the way to do it. I'm gonna instruct you on how to do it, but I'm gonna let you keep on doing it. Oh no, so Tavia, like, no, you can't do it no more. Like you just you just messed up. They're messing with the money. Okay. So so I'm gonna let the crowd let me see. Let me see, let me see. Says somebody Kimberly said you gonna have to go and have a word with the wholesaler. So that's what I think Tavi and Tay Moore said. You gotta have a word. All y'all said that. I think team may have a little bit more aggression on theirs or how they gonna <laughs> roll yeah, up. Yeah, okay. a little aggressive. <laughs> All right, let's see. Doesn't matter. Wholesalers messing up the deal. They shouldn't have they have the investor first. Mm -hmm. I'm with Danica. This is exactly what I was thinking. In the contract with the wholesaler and recalibrate. Maintain our relationship with the park and continue to market the home. Nicole, yes. what you thinking? I'm thinking 
I would check the wholesaler. Like, what was you thinking sending out another investor out there? That deal was between you and I. You could have just got a buyer to come out there, right? So, but instead of getting a buyer, you got another investor out there talking aggressive. So I'm going to tell him the deal is off. Can't work with everybody. Can't JV with everybody. So I'm going to breach the contract. The deal is off. And I'm just going to go out and find my own buyer. Nice. I'm nice. pretty sure it was the reason why the initial investor didn't allow, was working with a wholesaler. And maybe the deal was out of state. He didn't, he or she didn't and have time could have been a lot of things but I, i'm not gonna do that and i will apologize to the park and say i'm sorry my partner bought somebody else out and i wouldn't even say my partner say i was in talks to selling it to someone i wasn't expecting them to be crazy like that but i'll make sure i'll vet again more thoroughly um for the next people that come through nice nice yeah i, I think honestly you know the cool thing about when we do mobile homes inside of a park uh contracts can be breached right because remember it's personal property mm -hmm. um you know it's not like a single family home right um so you still since you own since you are since you own it you do have the rights to breach that contract so i think i like what everybody said like you know even having a conversation i think that like say more was kind of like listen man you got to, you want to kind of you know like what are you doing right having a conversation and like clearly say you know may have to show tough love like yo know, this is a learner it sounds like you don't know what you're doing and this ain't the way to how to handle it right um and then even the fact that you know you know talking about that and you know i mean sorry what the investor is saying you know just going to true like hey they, no that's not your house and going to the park and just be like like you said apologize hey look this is what i was trying to do but apparently they don't know what they're doing um you know we don't don't worry about them right i'm not I'm not going to pretty much have this um, do it. Somebody asks, what is there's a penalty? What if there's a penalty to break the contract with the wholesaler? Now, if this was a mobile home on his own land, then that's when that that's when that it could be a penalty, right? Because again, those contracts stand. But whenever it's personal property, remember, we're just leasing the land from the park in the first place. Mm -hmm. We leasing the land. So I gave him permission to sell my asset but what he's coming to do he's breaching my contract with the community and putting me in jeopardy of possibly um having issues with the community so that's where he breached their contract by going in there and then falsely saying that that the property is theirs and threatening to move and everything like that and then how are you gonna force somebody to get approved anyway <laughs> you know what i'm saying i don't even get that but okay <laughs> hey man listen <laughs> Nicole, you want the, the last scenario, scenario number four? No, sir. That is a wrap for tonight, guys. Are you gonna wrap it, it is, up? Yes, sir. It's it's right. eight o'clock. I'm tired. Mm -mm. We <laughs> promised everybody we would do an hour. It's seven fifty five. But listen, y'all, this is mobile home. The mobile home edition of what would you do? We're gonna do this every. The goal is to do this every today Thursday. Every Thursday at mm -hmm. 7 p.m. Tell your friends, tell your mama, tell your cousin. We're okay if you inbox us with scenarios. Why? Because our goal is to give you all more information so you can realize these possible scenarios so you could go out there and get the deal done. Although we're winning in mobile home investing, some of these scenarios don't just come out of the air. They happen in real life. So <laughs> this is what would you do? We want you all to know the good, the bad, and the ugly, right? When you're going out here to invest. The good thing is, though, 85, 90% of us, they're real property. So some of these scenarios you won't have to worry about because they're not real property, right? They're personal property, they're titles. So a lot of our oops, a lot of our oops can't be fixed, right? So Use this time, y'all, on Thursdays to tap in with us. Um, Mondays, I do What's the Scenario, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure you subscribe to Mobile Home Elite Investors uh, YouTube page at Mobile Home Elite Investors. You all can follow me at Mobile Home Mommy on Instagram and also follow me on YouTube at Mobile Home Mommy as well. That's all I got, Byron. And I appreciate everybody who jumped on. Oh uh, yeah, man. We truly appreciate y'all. Listen, y'all, this is always fun. You know, again, we're going to have new contestants. We're going to have returning contestants. And, you know, like the show BMF says, um, some of this has been fictional, but a lot of this 
Sugar Honey Iced Tea really happened. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I'm going to need some real scenarios that we going through and just really seeing how they can handle it. And we always want to give you all tools so you can go out, you can hear this, you can watch these replays and know, hey, you may have something similar. So again, we thank everybody, Kui, Danika, Aaron, Tavia, Taymor, Jill. We appreciate y'all time for coming out to hang out with us. Everybody in the, in the comments, show some love, show some love. And, I'll, and before we get off here, one by one, if you wanted somebody to follow you, I'll start with Kui. How can they follow you and learn more from you? Are you on mute? You, you, my bad. Sorry, you can follow me on Instagram at underscore Kui1111. Um, yeah, that's it. Awesome. Danica, what about you? Well, I don't run our business page. My other half does, but <laughs> we're students of the game um, on, on Instagram, and it shows our uh, mobile home journey. Oh, dope. Aaron, what about you? I didn't hear the question. I'm over here helping my son with uh, math. Oh, what what can mobile. they follow you at? Oh, oh, at, uh, on Instagram, at he buys mobile homes. And on Facebook, I think it's at Aaron Haynes. Awesome. Tavia? Facebook, the Chicago Buyers Group, that's B-Y-E-R-S. And the same on uh, Instagram as well. Awesome. Say more. You can follow me on Instagram at I'm so fro and on Facebook to more Curtis. Awesome. And last but not least, Jill. Follow me on Facebook at Jillian Shelby. Awesome. I appreciate y'all. All right, everybody. Have a good night. Appreciate y'all. Till Peace. next time. Thank next you. Thursday. Thank, Thank you guys. Thanks. Had a great night. Bye. Bye-bye.